I have this RLB Brawn branded electric toothbrush that I think well, pretty much everyone has if they have an electric toothbrush, or at least has tried. Um, it seems to be pretty much the common toothbrush, electric toothbrush that uh, pharmacies here in Australia and, well, supermarkets as well sell. So, um, and this one has really kind of stopped charging. It, it does charge, but the battery really barely lasts one brushing session with the timer, and uh, then it just uh, dies. So what I'm going to be doing is seeing if I can get this open for starters, and seeing what type of battery cell it uses, and if we can put something better in there to get it back to life, or if I have to throw it out and buy a new one. So let's have a look here. Um, and I'm judging by the fact that the case tapers to the bottom here. So that's where so it sits on a uh, charging base that goes into the bottom here, and there must be some kind of induction charger. But yeah, just judging by the fact that it tapers that way in, um, I'm assuming that it must have a seal around the top here somewhere that and then everything inside would pull out perhaps can't see any place where the where the handle peels off just a small gap right in here Maybe that. if I could get a spudger in there Oh yeah. Oh yes indeed. That's definitely a gap there. Okay. Don't really Okay. Hmm. It's a bit hard to show you on camera, but I can see that there's definitely a seal around there somehow, and a lip. That... Hmm. I wonder if I'd just be able to pull this out, or if it must have a locking mechanism or some kind. Um, can I just brute force it? Guess not. No, it's not. Ah, budging twist or something. Oh, I can't get enough. Oh, wait. Let's try. Uh, don't really want to damage that though. Um, what we can do. Let's do a little bit of electrical tape. Right, that should be enough. Yep. Okay. Let's try it that way. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you can see I've already cracked it loose there. If that, does that pull up? Oh. oh, it's like a twist. Oh yeah, oh god, look at all the old toothpaste coming out. Oh. And there it pops out. Oh yeah, exactly as expected. Nice. Okay. What do we have here? Let's see if I can take that. Oh yeah. Oh, so the whole motor assembly and everything pops out in there. It looks like. We got here. So that would be the, the charging coil and that goes to this little circuit board. And there's a spring in there. Hmm. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything else down in that tube though, so that's nifty. So it looks like that would probably go in there and spring load that coil for some reason. Let's pop that up there. So we don't lift it. Let's take a look at this board. So what have we got? We've got... So there's a motor here that drives the cog. 
And that is attached to these two terminals here, soldered straight onto the board. And the battery, you can see the end terminal down in there, and you can see it on the side here, this green cylinder. Looks like there's, so there's a nickel tab spot welded onto the end, which is soldered straight up here. And if we look at the other end, which is about here, and then there's another uh, nickel tab, I'm assuming. I can't actually quite see under there at the moment, but it looks like it's also welded, uh, sorry, soldered up onto the board right here. And then there's just circuits that control the timing and whatnot as you, you press the button and it runs for, I think it's three minutes, which is the, you know, time to brush your teeth. There's a nice little brawn, which is the uh, company that made this. So what I think we'll do is uh, kind of want to take this board off. I mean, I obviously need to take this battery out so I can see if I can get a replacement. Or, I mean, it kind of just looks like a standard double A cell. But uh, looks like I will need to desolder the motor, the battery, and the charger on the end here and then just kind of pull everything out. So, let's do that. Let's, first of all, I thought this uh, toothpaste sponge that I've dribbled on my uh, pad here. Okay. And Let's get in my soldering braid. Desoldering braid, sorry. Let's move that out of the way. Move these out of the way. And I will want probably a little bit of flux. Just on these terminals. Especially because this is probably lead-free solder and it will not want to desolder well. And let's grab a pair of tweezers, my iFixit kit. Oops, that's my solder. My multimeter. Um, because I'm tr probably going to want to try to gently lift these wires, these ones right here, so that they're not. Uh, once I've removed the solder, I'll need to lift the wires so that I can pull that out. Okay. Yeah. Let's go melt them. So let's go from one end to the other. Let's go start at the easy end. Need a bit more flux on there. You know what I need is something to hold this down. I'm just going to use a little bit of blue tack. This is just going to roll all over the place. So let's just pop on the bottom, both sides here. And blue tech doesn't stick to silicon. Oh, of course. Mm hmm. Let's bring in a cardboard box. Stick it to that. Okay. Much better. Alrighty. Is a lot of solder wick here because there is just gobs of solder in holding these in. Look free. Alrighty. Let's my solder pen again. Do this battery terminal. It's actually uh, clippers. Let's clean up 
the swick bit. terminal a bit too long because that will transfer heat straight into the battery that we've got there but that looks clear now too all right so let's move on to these ones let's clip the switch again now these ones are going to be the tricky ones because oof that was hot Straight where I was just soldering, of course. Because these wires for the uh, charging coil are very fine, and I don't want to melt the, uh, the little plastic housing that they come on there. Well, I melt it as little as possible. bit and gently lift. So that's now separated and we'll do oops sorry we'll do the same for the other side one. Separated. Now let's get this out of the battery terminal. Lots more solder work needed here. Lots more. God, they really gobbed on the solder on this board. I guess it's cheap insurance. Cool. So, let's uh, break that off. Okay, move that out of the way. Let's have a look here. So now it looks like this is actually held in with two little clips there, which I should just be able to pop out. Yep, there's one. And there's the other. And if I did everything right, this should just yeah, look at that. Slide out. Uh huh. Well, there's the. Uh, induction charging coil you can see it's got really really quite thin wires um, that lead up to well just yeah the induction receiving coil yeah. it's even got you can see um, the, the plastic here has little it's almost springy I'm guessing that's just to I don't know actually what that's for Maybe just a shock absorber on the bottom. So looking at the other contacts here, we should... They don't look like they're connected. They are desoldered. So we should be able to get this board up now. It doesn't look... Oh, it looks like there's a pin here. Don't... Oh, it's slightly melted over. So that would be holding it in place. Yeah, it's really tight. Okay, let's grab. Let's have a look. Quick look on the underside. And it doesn't... Look like the looks like a single air board, so I would feel comfortable using my spudger to lever up underneath there. Try to force it up. Yeah, it's clear. Just as long as I don't break the board. <laughs> Easier said than done. And there we go. We're free. There's the board, liberated from its case, 
as I said, nothing on the other side. Yeah, hold that down. Let's take a look at this cell. It doesn't look like there's anything else holding it in. It's just... Okay. Oh yeah, so what have we got? We have a nickel metal hydride. What does that say? 1 HR AAC 02Z1307 TEB. So I'm not quite sure what those markings mean. This looks like just pretty standard. You know, put, don't put it in the trash, try to recycle it if you're in that area that it can be recycled, etc. So I'm not actually quite sure what. I mean, I. 1HR. I mean, normally on a. This is a double A format. Nickel metal hydride rechargeable. I'd expect it to have markings indicating the uh, the amp hour rating of the battery or the milliamp hour rating usually on a on a double A cell. Uh, this one, I might have to look into what these ratings mean and then go and see if I can get. Uh, well, yeah, a double A cell nickel metal hydride rechargeable uh, of the same or better I guess as long as it's so I suppose as long as the uh, the voltage is the same is pretty standard 1.2 volt cell um, I could probably put a higher charge current nickel metal hydride cell in the same uh, place and I mean, it would take longer to charge, but the toothbrush, you know, sits there for half of the day charging on a fairly low trickle current using the induction. But, uh, I mean, it would effectively charge it over, over, over time, and then you would have a, a toothbrush that lasts quite a lot longer. It wouldn't, wouldn't be more powerful necessarily. It'll, it'll just last longer. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to go figure out what these markings mean and, well, buy another cell. Okay, so what we have here, after a little bit of quick googling, um, is, let me just pull up the sh spec sheet here, this is a Sanyo cell, Twi cell, uh, HR AAC 1 amp hour, and as you can see here, it is a nickel metal hydride battery with a typical capacity of 1000 milliamp hour, so I went to uh, the local parts store for, well, yeah, parts, uh, J-Car Electronics, and picked up uh, yeah, their local brand, Powertech, I don't know what Powertech, who actually makes these, um, but it's the best I could get at the short notice, 2000 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride. So let's see about swapping this in. So it's the same, yeah, pretty standard double A cell. Um, the one thing I have noticed is that the tabs are significantly wider. So I may do, need to do a little bit of trimming to get those in, especially because these holes... Yeah, much too big. I guess the one on the end won't really matter, but the, uh, the positive terminal up the, at the top here will definitely matter. I might have to... I may just end up trimming half of that off, so let's grab our good colors. Let's have a look here. So, there we are. Yeah, especially because this is offset, so if I clip that just, just this side off, then it looks like it'll be right nice and centered. So I'd say we trim to about there looks good. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Nibble that away. And then let's. Whoa, that went shoot off. Now I'm never finding that again. Oh well. So, let's give that a quick test, shall we? So that would go through, oops, upside down, and go through that hole. Oh, that fits perfectly. 
Look at that, and that folds over to fit there, so that's damn spot on. What I may do is just trim this up a little bit because it's a bit too tall. Nice. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. There you go. Great, okay. Let's put it back together. So this would go, uh, yeah, that way. Let's pan that up. Put the board back in. Let's make sure these motor terminals are lined up mostly. And sorry if you can't see much, this is fairly fiddly. I might need to get my, but I put them, my tweezers out again. And guide these in. Nope, it's bent. Oh, it's going horribly wrong. <laughs> okay, take two. So the problem is here: these battery, these are motor terminals are not lining up. So let's try to bend those in line with each other first. Okay, let's try that again. Ah, much easier. Oh, and that pin is lined up too. Lines up with those clips and let's bend that terminal over. Okay, so you can see here the battery. It's nice and lined up, the motor terminals are in and the one on the end is there too. So what we'll do as well, let's get this guy back in too. So I can do it all at once. Okay. Looks good. Let's bring it out. I know I put it somewhere. That box that I had. There it is. Okay. Let's put that blue tag. It's exactly where I left it. <laughs> Until I clean my desk a lot. <laughs> okay, that's good. What I may do as well as I may just zoom you in a little bit. Yeah, that's nicer. Okay, Let's get my eye out. And let's grab a wee bit of. And let's get going. So I'm going to start down the other end this time and put that oops, sorry, put this battery down. Let's get the lines down at the same time. And there should be a little bridge between that, so it looks like this wire bridges to the negative terminal of the the battery for charging purposes, I guess. Okay, looks good. Okay. Now the motor terminals. Two. All right, that should be it. So that blue take off again. Let's give it a quick look over.
Now then, if everything worked here, I should be able to press this button. Oh, I guess this battery isn't charged. Let's fake it. Uh, what am I looking for? Let's get my bench power supply set to 1.2 volts. Turn it on. No, we want. Uh, let's screw that back down. <laughs> okay. So we want. Uh, this is going to be interesting. I'm going to press this button at the same time as I'm holding two terminals. Okay. Put that one there. Ooh. It's not working at all. Let's clip that on like that. And then let's hold that on. Can do a power? Yeah. Okay, is so something isn't right? Let's have a close look. That'll do. Let's, let's just zoom you back out there. So bring my meter in here. Let's just check. Let's, let's do a quick check -o of that battery. So. Oh, we do actually have 1.2 volts. Okay, so. Hmm. Interesting. Why are you not working? Maybe it does need a charge, even though it's got one point. Even though it's showing one point two volts, it's it still entirely possible that it may be below a certain threshold that the circuitry on this board doesn't like. What I'm going to do, because it is pretty easy now that I know how to pull it apart, I'm going to put it back together and put it back in its case and throw it onto charge. Leave it to charge for a little bit. See what happens. So what happens here is you've got the spring. Goes on the bottom here. Let's move this out of the way before I stab myself with those contacts. Okay. So, the spring on the bottom here. The. Uh, let's take the spring out for a sec. The, uh, the head end goes on next, and that goes with the main in there. And then that has some little alignment pins that clip in. Then, the spring goes in the bottom and looks like that goes back up the entire way and then while I was playing around with it earlier I found that it, that that spring actually has to kind of close most of the way until you're able to feel where the button is and it springs back out so when putting it back together you really have to give it a good force so and it also this has a little lock so it actually goes in and then twists to close. So shove that in, shove that down, and then you have to really give it a push oh, until you find where it wants to click in. Yep, and there we go. And then that clicks back in. That. Pliers again. There we go. Now they're closed. Okay. So I'm going to go plug that in or drop it on the little base and see how we go. And we're back. So I've got the uh, Braun charger base here. As you can see, it kind of just slots in like that. 
and uh, you see this is the Australian model which is uh, if you can read that it goes from 220 to 240 so this is not a international compatible unit uh, it will only work in 240 volt mains it looks like it draws 0.9 watt now with I mean with the induction coil I don't even know where to begin calculating how much that would actually use um, if I was more prepared I would have gotten my power meter out and minted it but I'm not and here we are so let's pop it in so you can see it just sits on the base like that induction coil I'm not even going to leave it on for particularly long it usually charges I mean initially pretty quickly and we'll see how it goes hey look at that that's pretty good beautiful so I'll obviously put this back in the bathroom uh, give it a proper charge um, and then fix the other one that we have because it's well it doesn't have the same charging issues as this one did but uh, I mean why do one when you can do two right and I mean they the uh, the replacement battery that I purchased was only uh, it was four ninety five five dollars or so so might as well pop the other one in my other toothbrush and then they're both on the same playing field but uh, yeah pretty simple nice and easy upgrade get another decade out of these to uh, toothbrush <laughs>